You guys ready to start another one? Let's do it. All right, so we're gonna give you guys a look at what we got going tonight. We've got a 20 foot cargo hauler trailer here. So a friend of mine owns it. He was keeping it at his cabin. This last year we had record snowfall. So I'll show you guys what happened. And as you can see, the snow was too much for it. So we basically have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cross supports that are bent it's also bad enough that you can see daylight so we've got to get these cut out we're gonna put new ones in and we're gonna upgrade the thickness so they're a little bit heavier duty this stuff is like 14 gauge we went up to like 11 gauge 10 gauge that should help he says he's not gonna keep it up there anymore so I think where he's keeping it down here and where we're upgrading the thickness, it should be twice as durable as it was before. So that's the plan. Now, the next thing we've got to do is to start cutting them out. It is gonna be a little tricky. I've checked it out and it looks like there is some weld in there, so it's gonna be tricky. It could be a little bit of a surgical process. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a cutoff wheel and I'm going to cut it back here and I'll cut on that side and I'll drop the middle section out and then I'll grab the end piece and see if I can move it back and forth until the little weld breaks. Hopefully that'll get it off so that I can clean them all up and get the new ones up. And I think I want to do kind of the same thing they did. I don't want to go crazy with weld because if something ever happens in the future, the guy that ends up fixing it's going to be cussing you. So. We're just going to put little spot welds to hold it in place. It's not going to go anywhere, but this is one of those things where you can't put too much weld or it's going to be a nightmare in the future if you have to replace them again. So I'm actually grateful there's not a ton of weld on them. I do think you probably want more than that. That's probably not enough weld there. So we're going to do a little bit better job than that. We'll grab a zip disc and a grinder some earplugs and we'll see if we can't get after it all right so i'm going to show you guys what we're going to do here got a piece of eighth inch plate here i'm going to slide it between the roof panels and the tube that way when i get cut through the tube it's not going to put a big gouge in the roof this is another one of those surgical jobs where you've got to be a surgeon so we're going to just slide this over and we'll cut it right here. Hopefully when it breaks through, it doesn't, you know, cut a big hole in the roof. So that's what we're trying to avoid. This is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna see how it goes. All right, guys, one of the worst parts is over. <laughs> one, one of the worst parts. It's always good when it's one of the worst parts. So you can see there's a little bit of a weld on top. So they must have welded that when they built the frame before they put the skin on. So after thinking about it, I think what I'm gonna do is I'll cut the new ones, I'll clean up the paint off of this, and then I'm just gonna put a little weld on the bottom here. So I'm gonna put a little stitch weld to hold it in place and that should be enough to hold it so sometimes in fabrication you might have to do a job to where you've got to build it so that you can replace parts on it later if that makes any sense you've got to be able to plan ahead 
and say, okay, if this gets damaged in the future, I need to build this or fabricate this in such a way to where I can cut it apart and only have to replace certain parts. Now, we are gonna strengthen this up. It's gonna be better than it was. The tube's heavier wall. It's wider, so it is stronger. So it will support the weight better. But if the situation should arise to where we need to, or someone needs to, we wanna make sure that we can still get it apart without having to tear the top off. So that's my plan. We'll put a little stitch weld on the bottom there. Man, we are getting some rain. It is flat coming down. And there's my new truck sitting out in the rain. <gasps> Sometimes that's what you have to do, I guess. When you got stuff in the shop, making you money so that you can pay the payment. I guess that's what you have to do. All right, so now that that's done, you can see my material sitting out in the weather now. So I am gonna wait until the rain quits and then I'm gonna walk out there and unstrap it and start bringing the material in. It was nice and oily, so it shouldn't be Shouldn't be too bad. Once the rain quits, we'll bring the material in. We'll start cutting cross members. Uh, we've also got to clean the paint up. So we've got plenty to do. So we'll wait until this rain stops and then we'll give you guys an update. All right, check out that pile of spaghetti. I've taken probably the straightest one that we had and I did check the measurement on it. I also pulled the tape in here, eight feet and three quarters of an inch. So I'm hoping we can get three out of one stick. These are 24 footers, but they usually give you a little more to work with. So we'll go ahead and go into warp mode. We'll cut these and then we'll catch up to you guys after. guys we're back out here tonight we did get the tube all cut I went ahead and cleaned up the ends with the grinder knocked all the burrs off we are gonna wipe them down there's a little bit of oil on these which is good because it kept them from rusting in the big rainstorm yesterday but we want to get all that oil off I really don't think the customer wants that all oily so we'll wipe them down and then the only thing left to do on the inside before we get them up in there and tack them in place is we've got to knock the paint off where they're going to weld. I think what I'm going to use for that is my little Milwaukee die grinder here with a scotch Bright pad. That's pretty light gauge steel and I don't want to go in there with a flap disc and end up grinding half the material away. We want to be as delicate as we can and just take the paint and get it clean so that we can put our little stitch welds on there. So we're going to use this for that. So we'll go ahead, we'll get the camera set up in time lapse. We'll go ahead and clean all that up, get it all ready and prepped up. And then we'll go ahead and start putting them in place. And then we'll give you guys an update of how it looks before we start welding them out. All right, guys, I want to give you guys an update on the status of the situation. This one's up in place. Pulled a measurement off the previous support. It's even. We're ready to weld it out. My plan for doing that. Oh, yeah, we're doing it. So we got the inverter welder up here. I've got it hooked up to 110. I want to see how it does. This is really light gauge steel, and it's also just going to be like a one inch stitch weld at a time. That welder should handle it. So it really should not trip out. If it does trip out, there's an issue, but it'll be a good test for this machine. It's convenient. My other welder's so big and rolling it up in here and then my cord is actually not long enough to get it up in here and plug it in. I'm still in the process of building a extension cord for it. I know, I just gotta get it done. But this is a good test for this machine. I'm kind of excited to try it out. We did roll a bottle of gas in here. So we are gonna try it. We're running solid wire. Let's go ahead and try it on this first one, see how it does. Here we go. Oh 
like it went pretty well. Let's see how this other side goes. It's actually running really good so far. It hasn't tripped out. It's running smooth. This may be the ticket for us. So I'm going to get the next one in here and I'll show you guys the process I'm going through to get them up in there. Um, there is some places where the weld broke on this side where I may have to grind it off here and there. I had to do it with this one. Most of them should slide in unless there's a big piece of weld. So this one does have a piece of weld we're going to have to grind off. It's not that bad. I just sneak the zip disc up in there and cut it off, grind it flat, and then it's not a big deal. So we'll do that now and then I'll show you guys the process I'm using to get them up in there and check measurements and all that fun stuff. Alright, so I've ground all the remaining weld from the previous supports off. Now I'll slide one end in. I'll lift up on the roof just a little bit. Slide that one in. Okay. This light's a game changer, by the way. It's a super cool tool. It's time for today's super cool tool. Alright guys, so for today's super cool tool, what we're going to be talking about is this light that I've been using on this project. I got this light quite a while ago, I want to say three, four years ago. It is a DeWalt light, the model number DCL044. But I love this light, and I'll tell you why. The reason I love this light is because it's got multiple features that make it very nice when you're working on something to have options to be able to get light on what you're working on. So it's got a little hook here so you can hang it. It's got a belt clip so you can put it on your pocket and adjust it if you're working on something. It also has a little screw, a slotted screw hole there. So you could put a screw in the wall and hang it adjust it where you need to. The other cool thing about it is it's got a magnet on it. So, so just like you saw me use on this project, I was able to take this light and stick it on the track in the trailer and then adjust the light right on my work where I need it to be. So it's just a very versatile light. I like that the light swivels wherever I need it to go. It's bright, it's an LED light, but it is extremely handy when you can swivel and put the light right where you need it to go. Even if you don't end up getting this light, purchase a light that you're able to adjust and put the light on your work so that your work quality doesn't suffer. That's the whole point. There's going to be times in fabrication where you're working on something and it's dark, you're up under something, you're inside a trailer, whatever it may be, and you need to put light on your work. Otherwise, you can't see what you're doing and then your work's going to suffer because of it. So get a good light that's going to light things up for you, that you can adjust. It doesn't have to be DeWalt. You know, if you're a Milwaukee guy, I know Milwaukee makes a bunch of different kinds. Harbor Freight even has some options of things like this that will help you light up your work area. Go out and get yourself a cordless light so you're not having to deal with cords. Make sure that it's cordless. Make sure that the light is adjustable. And, you know, if you can help it, Find one with a magnet on it so that you can stick it places, so you can hang it. Get yourself a light like this so that you can light up the dark and make yourself a better fabricator so that your work doesn't suffer when you are working in the dark. So that's going to wrap up our super cool tool for this one. Let's get back to the project. So now I'm just going to tap it over. i got to be careful with the roof panels. And I'm putting it right center with where the old one was. These are a little wider, so it's gonna give added strength and support. The wall thickness is also a little bit heavier. So now I'll pull a measurement from the previous support to this support and make sure that the measurement is the same. Something else I'll do just to double check is I'll come back to this first support and I'll pull the measurement there and make sure that that's the same measurement as well. All right, we're good there. We're gonna go ahead and tack this one up. We'll tack it on both sides and then we'll weld it out. Alright, 
so we're on a roll now. A little stitch weld on each one of them. And that is actually more weld than was on them before. But that's going to hold them in place. It's going to give them plenty of strength for what they need to do. So we're just going to go ahead and start working on the rest of them. Now that you guys have seen the process, we'll put it in time lapse and we'll go ahead and just start doing the rest of them. You guys get the idea. So we'll go into warp mode and then we'll give you guys an update once we get that done. Alright guys, so let's give you one last look here. We got this all finished up. So the inverter welder, once I got it figured out, once I got the settings dialed in, worked like a champ. And honestly it was a game changer being able to just pick it up and lug it around and move it around the trailer where I needed to. I strapped the gas bottle down inside the trailer and then I was able to just move the welder wherever. It's light. So I was able to do everything I needed to and it did trip on me twice But something I figured out about the welder and if you guys have purchased one of these welders or if you're thinking about it Something that's going to help you out and I didn't know this until this project You've got to make sure you got a good clean solid ground if you don't it will trip on you because it's struggling to make the arc and it's pulling more amps when it struggles to do so and it ends up tripping out so as long as you've got a good solid ground it runs a lot smoother and after I figured that out I never had any issue so just make sure that you pick a good clean solid spot to put your ground clamp and you shouldn't have any issues I do think if you were to crank the machine clear up it probably would trip but once I figured the ground thing out, it never did trip on me. And I'm welding 11 gauge material. So that's what I set the welder at. And I didn't have any issues after I figured the ground thing out. So keep that in mind. We got it all finished up. So it's got more weld on it now than it had before. You can see there's still some bubbles. You can see a little bit of light. He still needs to spruce up the roof on top. He's going to have to press it down where it's kind of bubbled up. Part of the problem is this stuff here is like that pressed wood paneling. And so it, it absorbed the moisture when it started leaking through. And that's why it's got these bubbles. And so he's probably just going to have to push those back down. And I think it'll look, end up looking a lot better once he does that. But it definitely looks a lot better than it did. That's going to be our trailer roof repair. So thank you guys for watching. We appreciate the support. If you like what you see, like, subscribe, and share. Hit the bell so you're notified when we post a new video. And see you on the next one. Okay, now record right here. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to... Really? So we'll grab a grip... Goodness. We'll grab a zip disc and a grinder. <laughs> so, you know, one of the, <coughs> some of the fabrication jobs, <coughs> sheesh, <the. coughs> some of the, <coughs> I think what I'm gonna use for that is my middle, <sighs> and I don't wanna go up there with a buffing disc. And I don't want to go up there with a flap. 
Just like you saw me, just like you saw me, just like you saw me use in the video, I was able to stick it on the metal track on the side of the wall. Goodness. Just like you saw me use on the video, I was able to stick this light on the track on the wall inside the trailer and then adjust the light where it... <sighs> So just like you saw me use in the video, this is the video. So just like you saw me use on this project, I was able to take the light and stick it on the track in the trailer and adjust the light where I needed to. B, do B.